If you're looking for a YouTube video about Twitter scraping, you have a lot of options. Some of them use Python, some of them use Python modules, some of them make absurd promises they can't keep, some of them are paid screen scrapers, and some of them are from yours truly. And while you may be tempted to trust the YouTube search algorithm and click on the first result, it's not always accurate, and a lot of these top results just don't work anymore. They have blatant errors and will fail. Sometimes the author is nice enough to pin a comment saying that, hey, this just does not work anymore, don't waste your time. And on other videos, you'll spend the entire afternoon coding until you get to a stopping point, and then you check the comments and you realize that, oops, this just flat out won't work anymore. So none of this is the fault of any of these video creators, it's just the nature of how scraping works. Either a website changes and a screen scraper stops working, or an API becomes outdated, or something else changes. And because YouTube search doesn't account for the number of errors or complaints in the comments section, a lot of these older, outdated videos remain on the top of the search rankings, whereas some of these newer videos where there are no complaints about errors don't get viewed. So in the rest of this video, we're going to re-rank the top 10 results for Twitter Scraper based on the number of comments containing an error divided by the view count for each video. I'll share the results at the end of this video, and they're also in the description if you just want to jump there and find the best videos to watch. Before we get started though, I do need to disclose that while the data we're going to analyze is not biased, I certainly am, because I offer a paid data scraping service for collecting Twitter data you can use as an alternative to the videos I'm about to show you. However, I realize that not everyone has the budget for my service, and some people just don't like me. So the next best thing I can do is point you to the best video that you can watch that doesn't involve using me. So to get the data for our analysis, we're going to use three endpoints of the YouTube API. The first one is a search endpoint, which lets us put in a keyword like Twitter scraper, and it'll get us back the organic search results in order. We then need to take those video IDs we get back and put them to this video's list endpoint, where we provide it a video ID, and it will return us statistics like the view count. Remember, we want to calculate number of comments with an error divided by the number of views. And to get the comments, we use this comment threads list endpoint, which lets us put in a video ID and it gets us back all the comments and replies. I'll put links to these three official endpoints in the description if you want to use them for your own purposes. As for my API client, I use my own data platform that I mentioned earlier. It lets me also scrape data from YouTube using their official API. I just need to provide my token, put in my query, and I was able to scrape all the organic search results as well as the video statistics and the comments. I'll put a link to it in the description. Again, disclaimer, it's a paid platform and it's not for everybody. So once we get the data in CSV format, we can analyze it in this Jupyter Notebook here. The first CSV I loaded is the organic ranked results so I can get the rank for each video. Then I load in the details of the top 10 videos so we can get the statistics, like the thumbnail image as well as the number of views they have. And then here I'm just merging them together so I have one big data frame and I order it by rank. So now in my data frame I have the top 5 videos ordered by how they appear in YouTube Organic Search. And I can see the view count here as well as the title and the video ID we're going to be using to match with the comments in the next part. Now I load up the comments CSV we got from the YouTube Comment Thread API where each row will represent a comment for a given video ID. So we can see here the same video ID is repeated over and over, it must be a popular video, and we can see the comment text here. In fact, here's an error because it contains the word error. And we can see a regular comment here that's saying they love their content, etc. And we also want to get the like count and the total reply count for each comment, so we can also calculate when the same people have the same error, they usually go and like that comment, indicate they're also having the issue or reply to it, saying that, uh-oh, I'm having this issue myself. Next, we want to filter the comments so we only get the ones that are error comments. So here, we're just looking at the text and we're filtering out any comment that doesn't have these key words like error, doesn't work, no results, no data, won't scrape, etc. This isn't scientific, these are just common things that I saw in the comments spreadsheet. And then we're calculating the error engagement here as 1 plus the number of likes per comment plus the number of replies for each comment. This will help us identify comments that got a lot of additional people commenting on it. So this number represents, ideally, the number of people experiencing that error for that comment. So we can see the results here. All of these comments should have some sort of error in them based on our filtering that we did above. On the right-hand side columns, we can see the like count and the reply count, and then also the error engagement rate that we added at the end. So we can see here, these top rows are all one because they didn't get any comments or likes, but these two here each got a reply, so the engagement rate becomes two. Now we're going to sum up this error engagement metric for each video, so we just do a simple group by video ID here, and then sum up that error engagement metric we just talked about, 
And voila, we have the videos with the most errors on YouTube about Twitter scraping. But again, this isn't the full picture because we haven't accounted for the view count. We'll do that here where we merge the data together based on the video ID. So we'll join these rows together with the original video statistics we got in the first part of this collab walkthrough. And then here we're gonna calculate the error rate as the sum of all these error engagement metrics divided by the view count for each video. We'll then sort by that metric so the results here on the top have the fewest errors per view count. And would you look at this? One of these videos doesn't have a single comment with an error. Let's check this one out. All right, so just ignore this ad, please. And we can see the title here, it's using R. It's pretty old, it's from 2017. And I don't see any comments with an error. It also doesn't have a lot of comments, so you know maybe it's just not popular enough for people to actually try it. The next result is my video where I teach you how to scrape Twitter data using only your web browser. So here I try to reply to my comments and I don't see any errors. I think maybe one person just had a mild issue using my service. Again, I don't wanna to be too biased. This is my own video, so don't pay attention to this one. And let's check out the videos with the highest errors per view. So this one here is using the Twitter scraper module. It's a Python mod that's bound to break and 0.29% of the views resulted in someone commenting with an error or liking or replying to one of those comments. So this isn't Alex's fault. He's using a third party Python library that's bound to break. And when that happens, you're sort of at the mercy of the package maintainer to fix it. And a lot of these errors here, module not found, a lot of times it's just someone who's not quite experienced with Python, as a polite way to say it, doing things they shouldn't be doing. And here's the one by Ken G we saw earlier, where he was nice enough to pin a comment saying it doesn't work. Then these other three here have high error rates. It looks like they're also using Python modules, SNS, Scrape, Twint, and something else. This one here is using Selenium, which is less likely to break, but you have some other issues. It's very heavy weight and can be complicated and it can break when things change. I wouldn't recommend it. So this video here looks pretty good. It has a relatively low error rate and he's using TweePy, which appears to use the official Twitter API. So if I had to pick one for you guys, that's not me. I would recommend this video here, how to get tweets by Python, Twitter API 2022. And these last two here are Octoparse, which is a competitor of mine. It's a paid screen scraper, and it seems to have a relatively low error rate, presumably because it's a more visual tool. All right, so moral of the story is try to avoid Python modules unless it's TweePy. And let's do a quick visualization here to show how the YouTube search results rank compared to the error rate. So here we can see the top results up here have the highest error rates, whereas numbers six through 10 have the lowest error rates. So when you're browsing on YouTube, don't always trust the highest ranked search results. They may end up with a lot of user frustration. Try to check the comments and look for the word error to save you a lot of time in the future. So check out the description. I'll put these ranked by the error rate in there and you can check out the best videos. Again, if you need to do this yourself, I recommend using TweePy. Stay away from those other Python modules because it appears they just don't work or will eventually stop working. Anyway, thanks for watching until the end and good luck.